Hi, in this video I will give an overview of uh, case structures in uh, LabVIEW, how you can create them and how you use them in uh, inside your LabVIEW program. Uh, here we see a very simple um, example of a case structure in uh, LabVIEW. Um, in this case it is used with, um, uh, with a boolean, so you have two cases, one true and one false. So in many cases, this is what we use, true false. So um, a case structure typically works like an if else sentence that we are that we know about from other programming languages like uh, C, C sharp, um, MATLAB, etc. Um, here we have different cases or if else uh, sentences. So let's go to LabVIEW and see how a case structure works and how we can create it in LabVIEW. So let's uh, start LabVIEW and just uh, select file a new VI in order to to create a new blank VI with a lock diagram and a front and a, a front panel. So the front panel where is where you create your um, user interface and the block diagram is where you create the code. Let's start by creating a very simple um, case structure in uh, side lab view. We just right click in order to get the functions palette, select structures and then select the case structure. And then you can just click once, keep the mouse while you drag it out like this. So inside here, you can create the logic for the different uh, cases. By default, it creates two cases, one false and one true, which we browse through using either click here and select true, false, true, or just click on this arrow to browse through them. And then um, you see this uh, connector, like this question mark, which um, selects which case uh, should be executed. So we can start by just uh, right click on it create a constant and then automatically a boolean constant will be created where you can select true or false so let's create some simple code within this false we can use for instance this simple one button dialog so in the false case you can select or create a simple message um, So if we go into the false case, this uh, dialog will pop up. And then we can just copy it into the true case, like this. And then we can type some something else here. Ford or something. So now, uh, if this is set to false, uh, this this only this case should be executed. If we set it to true, only this case should be executed. So let's start uh, to set it to false and then just uh, run our program. So you see, only, only the code in the false case was executed. And then you can set it to true. And then click run one more and only the code within the true case was executed like this. We can also replace this constant by some um, control on our front panel like this. And then we can remove this one and wire this one, this control as to the question mark. And then we can control it from the front panel. So now it's false. And you see it Volvo pops up, set it to true, then port pops up. So case structure is just like a simple if else sentence. You can also wire uh, inputs and outputs of this um, case structure. So let's try to do that. We go to our front panel, we just um, add in this simple example, add two numerics. We can just call this A 
and we can call this b and then we set a value here for uh, seven or something and then assuming uh, in the true case we just want to add those two uh, numbers together so you can just put them outside the case structure and then wire them to this border like this and then we can find the numeric add then we can fire and the different inputs like this and then the output we can create a new indicator on the front panel uh, a numeric indicator that we could call C. So in this case, A plus B should be C. And then we can put this on outside uh, the case, like this. And then before we can run this program, we have to, to, to make the code for all cases. So in this true case, Instead of addition, we want to subtract those two numbers like this. And then we can wire the output to the C connector or indicator. So now in the false case, uh, we add A and B and put the answer in C. In the true case, you just subtract A and B and put the answer in C. So let's see what's happening now. We start by um, make this boolean false. So then only this case should be executed. So let's run it. And then you see 4 plus uh, 7 is equal to 11. And then set it to true. Then only this case should be executed and in this case we use the minus so 4 minus 7 should be equal to minus 3 so that's how we create a simple uh, case structure in the uh, lab view where we have used a boolean as an input but we can also use other data types here so in, instead of boolean we could have a numeric say we have a numeric here and then we can wire this one you see this is a double but this question mark becomes an integer so let's change the data type here to to an integer like this now we have two cases zero and one and then uh, if we type zero here, this zero case should be executed. So in this case, the two in numbers should be added together. If we type one, they should be subtracted like this. But since we're using a um, numeric here now, we can add more than two cases. Uh, in uh, in the previous example we used a boolean so then we could just have a true or false but now we can have more than two cases so then we can just right click on the border and select add the case after or add the case before or we can duplicate the case or we can delete the case in this case we can just add a case after and by default it becomes number two so we have zero one two but we can also change the value here by just double click and type a new value. So in two, assuming we want to, to multiply these two numbers, multiply A uh, with B, and then we put the output here to C, like this. Now we can enter two and then these numbers should be multiplied. 
So one bad thing about using numerics is, let's say we can enter 7, but there are no cases that is number 7. So what happens now? Well, in this case, 11, it means it goes into the default case. So it doesn't find a case that is equal to to 7 in this case, it just goes into the default case. Uh, so in this case we could uh, create a new case and then let's just make this case the default. But right click on it and make this the default case and we can just make it just default and have no numbers and then inside here we could put a one button dialog and just create a constant no case exists for this choice or something then of course we can also since we need to have a number here on the output we can just create uh, let's say and um, create a numeric constant here like this and put it to zero or we could put it to not a number like this so just type not a number and now when we enter an unlegal number like 7 then this message will pop up so no case exists for this choice while we, if we enter 0 it will go into the 0 case if we enter 1 it will go into this case 2 if we enter 2 while we enter 3, 4 or any number higher than 2, it will go into this case and it will this message will pop up uh, and it will not show an answer here. Another uh, way to avoid this problem uh, with numbers that don't exist in the case, we can, could use something called an enumerator. So you can just right click here on the front panel, select numeric um, here on under ring and enumerator we can select enum and then inside here we can enter text and we can just call it um, plus then right click add item after minus right click add item after multiply like this so then we can enter all our choices here and then instead of this numeric control we can wire this enumerator to the question mark like this and then uh, this one shouldn't be necessary we can just delete, right click on the border and delete this case. Then we have only plus, minus and multiply like this. And then if you select plus, it will uh, add these numbers, minus or multiply. So in this case, we cannot choose a case that do not exist in the case structure using an enumerator. We can also use uh, ordinary strings. So let's create a string control instead of this enumerator and wire this string to the question mark like this and then automatically the question mark will get the correct data type. So then we have plus minus multiply. In this case we need to just make one of them uh, the default case like this uh, 
But the problem with strings uh, is the same as with numbers, so then we can assume we select add here, oh sorry, um, yeah, uh, plus, like this, it will go into the plus case, but the problem is we type something wrong, instead of plus we could add uh, add, in this case, uh, it will go into the default case, so in this case we could do the same, we could create a new case where we, where we have a pop-up that says you have chosen or written a text uh, string that is um, not available in the case structure. So we can do the same as we did for numbers, add case after and just use this uh, button. No existing or some message to the user. And then we can right, just right click here, a constant and type not a number or something. And just make this one uh, the default case. So we type um, String that is not valid, this this message will pop up. But if we put a valid valid string, it will go into the proper case like this. So we can put um, all kind of um, data types into this um, case structure. One other handy data type is to uh, put a, um, an error cluster onto the question mark, so assuming we have some functions um, that is uh, so most of the built-in functions or the functions you create by yourself should have an error output so this one we can wire it to the question mark like this and then you see by default we create a cluster with no error and error, so no error becomes green and error becomes red. So based on what happens here, if we get no error here, uh, we can keep up with our program and create some code here. Or if this function gives an error, uh, it will go into this case and then we can could pop up some error message or something. And there is an error in your code or something. So this is handy, very handy to use when you are using these error clusters that consist for most of the built-in functions and you should also use it for your own functions. So the output here error if there's some error in this function, you can pop a message to the user that tell him that this previous functions gave some error and then you can display it to the user like this. There is uh, one last thing I want to show you about uh, case structures in uh, LabVIEW. If you combine case structures with uh, uh, loops, for instance a, f a while loop, you will be able to create quite advanced uh, program applications inside LabVIEW. So let's start by creating a while loop like this. And then you could put a case structure inside the while loop like this. And with this programming technique, you can create quite advanced uh, applications. So this technique is called a state machine. Um, so next thing we need to do um, is to create a, what we call on the while loop here. We can create something called a shift register. So we just right click and add shift register. And then outside here we can make uh, create a string constant 
just enter some text there, start case, and then wire this one to this shift register. And next, we can wire it to the question mark on the case structure, like this. And then we can change uh, the name of the case to start start case like this and then we can create a, a new case we can just call it next case and then you can make the start case and uh, the default case and then we can also change the order of it we can just right click uh, to change the order like this so then we have two cases we have one start case and one next case so in the start case you can just in order to demonstrate the principle we can just use this uh, button uh, dialog button just enter a text or a message um, just start case and then then we have so when we, our program starts uh, it will first go into the start case which is the case we set here in this string and do the code inside here and then next we want to go to the next case so then on our shift register we can just enter a text here where we type the name of the next case like this and then we can put this one or wire it to the border and then to the shift register like this like this and then we can type a new message here like this and then uh, can also uh, create a timer like this in this example we just make it to 1000 milliseconds or one second so no uh, and in the next case we can either create a new case or we can just go into a loop go back to the start case or something you can also right click here on the border create constant start case like this and also um, we need to wire something to the loop condition in this case we can just make a button on our front panel a stop button so that our program goes into loop until we stop this click this stop button like this so let's see what's happening now when you run our program so let's run it so it goes into the case called start case and next it goes into the next case and then it goes to start case next case so our program goes into a predefined um, um, uh, structure of cases and this principle is called a case structure uh, sorry it's called a um, state machine so and uh, this uh, sequence uh, will go into a loop until we stop, uh, click this uh, stop button. So let's just uh, summarize. So this here we specify uh, the start case, which is, which is in this case, is uh, this one. And here we specify the next case it should go to, which is this one. And then it goes back to this first case, but it. It, we, we could have created more than two cases so so we could uh, uh, create a sequence of cases that we would uh, go through in our program so this 
uh, structure which is called a state machine principle it's very handy to use when you create more advanced lab applications so that's all you need to know about uh, case structures inside labview if you want to learn more about labview you can go to this uh, web page on this web page you find lots of uh, resources about labview you find lots of videos uh, code examples etc so that's all so good luck with uh, creating and using case structures in inside labview